Okay, everybody, breaking down your Irish brick wall in Irish estate records with Judy White. Thank you. Hello. I hope that uh, today's class will be a benefit to you. Estate records are probably one of the least used resources that can potentially help you find information about your Irish ancestors. They're not an easy source to find. We'll go into that later, but they're just full of information if those records exist. Did your Irish ancestor live on an estate? From this picture, you wouldn't think so, that humble little abode, but most of the time, those people were on estates. This is some information, statistics about um, estate owners that we'll begin with. By the mid-1700s, 8,000 to 10,000 people owned most of the land in Ireland. So if your people weren't living in a city, they were almost definitely on an estate somewhere. There's a book called The 1876 Return of Owners of Land, One Acre and Upwards. This may be well after your people immigrated, but this just gives you an idea. In that time period, over 32,000 people owned one acre or more of land, and over 36,000 owned less than one acre. In 19 different estates in Ireland, and that's not counting all of the estates, but in 19, over 1 million acres of land were contained within these estates. Estates cross boundaries, so if your people lived up in County Tyrone, for example, it would not be unusual for an estate owner to perhaps also own land in County Cork and County Waterford and other places. So the estates are spread out um, and often in several counties. This picture here of the Hamilton Estate, you can see those buildings in the center of the picture, but if you look at those other buildings that are further out, those would all be part of the estate. So they're huge holdings of property for these landed estates. There are three different kinds of Irish estates. One are the Crown Estates states, which were property of the king and or queen of England. Um, those records are somewhat different from private individuals as far as the types of records that exist and where they might be. The landed estates, that was the most common practice in Ireland. You had these very wealthy men that had these property holdings. Often they were from England and they were absentee. They might have lived on their main estate in Ireland where there was an abode, but they also could be living in England. And in that case they were absentee. So they would hire a manager to oversee the affairs of their estate and records were generated by this manager or by the estate owner himself. The encumbered estates happened after the potato famine. One of the reasons for having tenants on the estate was they took care of things for the estate owner. They would take care of the repair of the roads, they would take care of growing the crops, taking them to market, uh, they would get rid of the eels that were in the river that were a trash fish or that would eat the other fish that they would use for food. So they had a number of jobs that they would do. They also paid rent for the abodes that they lived in, these small little homes that they lived in on these estates. And when the potato famine occurred, it of course devastated the whole country people were not able to make their rent payments twice a year. And as a result, estates were foreclosed upon because there was no money to pay the taxes. 
sometimes those estate owners would assist their tenants to leave, uh, would help them to immigrate so that they would have property that they could reuse for other things that would generate money. But ultimately, a good many of those estates were foreclosed upon and the property was sold. So those encumbered estate records generate another body of documents that are useful in tracing these tenant families that lived on the estates. The estate records that exist are just so varied in the type of information you might find. I'm only talking about some of the more common records that you would see, but as we go through this presentation, I'll throw in some comments about things that I've noticed in estate records. You can find deeds and leases in estate records. These would be transactions between the estate owner and his tenants. You could find census and census substitutes in estate records. The estate owner might want to have a list made of tenants who were paying rent on his estate at a certain time. Um, legal records, including wills. The wills would pertain to members of the landed estate family and not the tenants. But there would be legal documents in there if court action had to be taken because of some misdeed by a tenant or something of that type. Legal records resulted. And those types of records would be found within the body of estate records. Financial accounts. The manager of the estate or maybe the woman that oversaw the affairs of the estate house would keep these records detailing what was spent for various items or money that was paid out to the people that worked on the estate. Um, so there's a, different types of financial accounts you can expect to find in estate rent records. Rent rolls would be a list of the tenants and rents that they paid, whether they paid them or not. If they were in arrears, there might be comments made in these rent rolls about the person that was living on that particular piece of property. You can find maps and plans of the estates and genealogical information about the landed gentry family that owned the estate and all kinds of other things. It just depends on the estate and who was keeping the records as to what kinds of information might be found. What I found very, very interesting is years ago I was looking at a typescript of the Ecclesville estate up in Northern Ireland and it listed information about the tenants the property that they were renting, the amount of rent that they paid, information about the land, how many acres type of thing, um, and those comments that would be made. There was enough information in those summaries of this Ecclesville estate, and that particular summary went for approximately 100 years. I was able to match up the information using the name of the grantor who most of the time was Daniel Eccles, the estate owner, but it might have been one of his children after he died, um, who the person was that was leasing the property. So I had that name. And sometimes I had a description of the property. And I went to the Registry of Deeds Index looking for those particular deeds and leases that were mentioned in this estate record of the Ecclesville estate and found very few recorded in the Registry of Deeds. With the Registry of Deeds, somebody had to travel to Dublin to register that deed. So from County Tyrone to Dublin was not an easy trip, especially in the time period that we're talking about, 1700s, 1800s. So that didn't surprise me as much, although only finding about 12% registered was a surprise. Then I found another periodical article 
about an estate that was much closer to Dublin, just the next county over in Kildare, and had the same type of information to compare to the index to the Registry of Deeds to see if I could find the deeds. And I thought that it would be a different result because it was so much closer to Dublin. It wasn't the um, long distance, and it wasn't they could have done it in a day's time. But approximately 12%, again, were only registered in the Registry of Deeds. So bottom line, there are so many deeds and leases in the state records for these tenant families that live there that you'll never find in the Registry of Deeds. That alone makes it very worthwhile trying to find the state records and see if you can find information about your families. This is one example of a deed that was found in an estate record. The Registry of Deeds began in 1708, and this particular deed dates from 1672. So you'll find records that predate that particular government body. Again, the type of information you might find on these records will vary from document to document and from a state to state. But this is just one example of what might be found in a lease book. It names the individual who leased the property. In this case, it was Oliver Dobbin, who was 73 years of age in 1834. There are different terms to leases and to deeds. One of the ways that people would lease property is for the term of X number of lives. So this particular deed in 1838 was for three lives. In the deed itself, or the lease, it only listed two of the people, one of whom was the Princess Mary of England, and then the second one was William Dobbin, the only son of Oliver. People could put anybody down for leases of lives or deeds deeds of lives. They didn't have to be related. They could put down a child, and this often happened because a child obviously would have a longer lifespan than somebody who is an adult. And if it's for the term of three lives, all three of those people had to have been deceased to terminate this particular deed. The amount of property that Oliver was leasing was a little over 17 acres, and his annual lease was a little over 10 pounds sterling a year. And then the bailiff for this Earl of Charlemont's estate reported that William, the son, was deceased. Didn't give a date of that, but the Princess Mary of England was still alive, so the deed was still in effect for this elderly Oliver Dobbin. This is a summary of, of what was found for that particular individual. Censuses. The 1834 census of families in the Crown land, so this would be the land belonging to royalty, an estate that was either the king or queen at the time of England for this particular area in County Cork, Ireland. And this went on for several pages. So we have this household. It doesn't give relationships for most of the individuals. This household with William Prindable, age 54, who was a widower and a farmer as the head, Julian Prindable, 20, and then William's grandson, William Fitzgerald, who was eight. So that tells us that he had a daughter who married someone by the name of Fitzgerald. And then this elderly 80-year-old Catherine Bradley. So this is an example of, an, of a census that was taken. Um, the Crown Grants, or the Crown Land uh, estate of this particular area in County Cork, a number of people left that area and apparently were assisted to immigrate to America. And so another census substitute was generated that again went on for